In that sense, we are uh, not only happy to be in the lithium industry, we are programming to build the lithium mine that will have the lowest CO2 footprint in the entire industry. Well, welcome to Assay TV. I'm pleased to be catching up with Waldo Perez, CEO and founder of Neolithium, for an update on their projects at this mid-year point. Hello, Waldo. Hey, Adam. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, great to be speaking with you today. Now, when we last spoke, um, you were setting a really good pace in terms of the development of the discovery at 3Q in Argentina, um, and you've had some further increases of the uh, resource estimate. Can you take us through that to start with? Yes, of course. Um, during this summer, we uh, that is Argentinian summer, of course, uh, we continue drilling. Uh, and actually, we were able to find rime uh, outside the previously known ore body. In other words, the brine continues beyond the salar. What it is in my back here is, is a picture of the salar and the ponds. What is going on is that the brine extends beyond. Uh, we don't know yet how much more beyond the salar the brine extends. However, uh, we had to do an update, a refreshment of our previous resource because the last resource was issued in 2019. And actually, since then, we found brine below the ore body and now we have it besides the ore body. So we did a refreshment. As a result of that, and by the way, the drilling was focused in the, in the northern half of the deposit that contains higher grade. Uh, at the northern half is about 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per liter. The southern half is about six to 700 milligrams per liter. So it's almost double the grade to the north and to the south. So, so uh, we basically double measure and indicated resource. It's, the increase is more than that. It's a 125% measure and indicated resource increase on the high grade zone. What that means, which is very important, is that Previously, we planned for a 20,000 tons lithium carbonate production per year for 35 years. And we knew that we had a capability to expand for further 20,000, that is to produce 40,000. Now, uh, now we don't know. Now, now it could be bigger than that. So instead of having two construction phases of 20 plus 20, maybe that is 20 and the second phase and I'm sure no, it's going to be more than 20, simply because we increase the resource significantly. We will not stop here. We will continue drilling. Right now, we are in Argentina in the middle of the winter, snowing the project, very difficult to drill under these conditions. So we are waiting until August to resume. There is going to be a large drilling program, and we will continue expanding. But please, geology is always ahead of mining. So geology means... We are planning ahead for the expansion. We are talking about the blue sky here. We're talking about what's going to happen in 2024, 25, 26. How are we going to expand? The project that is planned to be 20,000 tons lithium carbonate production is on the go. The feasibility is advancing. There are no changes, changes in our program. It's simply the blue sky that changed. Excellent. So plenty of upside potential with this um, uh, new resource estimate. Um, so back in March, we discussed how the project was looking on the feasibility side of things. And you had some idea of some numbers, um, uh, an MPV of 1.1 billion and uh, around 50% IRR. Is that still very much in place? Has there been any changes there? Yeah, so far, so good. Um, of course, I cannot predict the final result, but so I can tell you that so far, Nothing that we have seen is beyond the deviation or the, the, the standard error that this kind of estimation has. That, if I recall correctly, was 20% for our uh, pre feasibility. So everything is falling within that uh, percentage. So we're hoping and we're thinking, we're estimating that we're going to be you know, right there, plus or minus. Excellent. Um, I was reading the update from CATL that have uh, recently announced another gigawatt uh, battery factory in Shanghai. Um, obviously, it's great news and worth reiterating that you have them on board as a partner and investor. 
Um, but could you just uh, comment on how that partnership is sort of strengthening uh, your development process um, as well? Well, uh, yes, it's a strengthening with the uh, definitive uh, certification of the product, okay? Um, they know what they want and we fine tune our product uh, to be on the market. Um, uh, you know, Adam, um, I think that uh, the battery industry is permanently on change. It's really, uh, it's more similar to, shall I say, to the, to, to the internet industry that actually is similar to, to the normal factory industry, you know. So I think that many people will have to adapt to new uh, qualities for battery grade and technical grade and so on. Remember that lithium carbonate is not a product that comes from nature. It's not gold. That you, your gold is as good as my gold. It's actually a product that you manufacture. The carbonate part you buy, and the lithium carbonate is, is built together, put together. So the quality, the size, the purity, all those elements are very important. And you need to work with your customer. In this case, CATL is your customer. You need to work with them to actually you know, put it together. So uh, I'm very, very happy. I can tell you that our communication is permanently. Perhaps people don't know, Adam, but uh, we have a permanent employee of Neolithium in China. So we have a Neolithium China, okay, literally. Not now, we had it for like three years. And uh, Helen uh, has been helping us uh, putting all this together. And this is to show, you know, that we, we put a lot of importance in the communication back and forward and, and actually the relationship. Because somehow, of course, we're a partner, but it's also a client, okay? it's also a customer. Excellent. Oh, that's great. That's good uh, insights to, um, to have there, actually. Um, well, commenting on some of your points then and thinking about the market in general, um, you know, we seem to be in a good place uh, with, with regards to uh, the lithium market. I just wanted to get your views on um, do you think now is the time that's going to, that is certainly attracting more investment into um, miners and in turn junior miners uh, within lithium because of the price that we've seen sort of rise and sort of stabilize now and because of this appetite for electric vehicles? Yes, uh, honestly, this is the time for producers. That is today, the balance is on our side, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, we as, 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 as entrepreneurs and business people is the time when we can build minds. Let's be clear. Okay. This is the time when when small companies became major companies. Okay. Uh, back in the 80s it was gold and Barrick was created out of a junior company, just to say, you know, and there you go, a gold giant. Uh, and, and I think this is now the time, uh, this century is the time of the innovative companies that are producing raw materials for in, you know, for, for a new generation of, of, uh, of technology, which is based basically on, you know, on, on the impact of, of humankind into, into the environment. Uh, in that sense, we are uh, not only happy to be in the lithium industry, we are programming to build the lithium mine that will have the lowest CO2 footprint in the entire industry. In general, Rhine mines have a much lower environmental impact and CO2 output uh, into the atmosphere than hard rock mines. Okay, so in that sense, producing a ton of lithium carbonate to the environment is much, uh, shall I say, better than producing it from sputum in terms of energy consumption, you know, environmental waste, or shall I say, uh, you know, uh, waste material and so on. But we will build this mine specifically to have the lowest uh, water consumption. We have changed our project. We, we, we have a consumption of uh, comparable mines, half of the water on comparable mines. And the CO2, uh, we are basically designing almost the entire process on solar. So it's gonna be a very, very low impact. We have hired a goal there to evaluate that impact and to make a comparison of our environmental impact with respect to the rest. Yep, excellent. I was going to ask about some of those points, but you seem to have touched on them already. But it leads me to think of, um, you know, the ESG consciousness that is very much 
at the forefront of investors' agenda at the moment, whether it's institutional funds or even retail investors now. Um, uh, how is that changing some of your conversations, you know, um, and, and sort of improving the processes within your mind? Do you think investors are getting it now that lithium needs to be, uh, lithium mining uh, needs to be invested in to become part of the energy transition? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we in, in your lithium believe that uh, uh, if, if the entire industry and, and, and human activity doesn't change into being uh, environmentally friendly beyond the meaning of the word, in other words, our activity has to be have minimal or as much as, as small impact into the environment as we can design. And we have a big advantage. Okay, we are we are designing this, this plant right now. So actually, what we have done is to take all the pieces and say, okay, keeping the economics of this project, how can we minimize environmental impact? And we found a lot of place, places to do it. And, and we were very pleased. And we even changed the process, for example. So we have least reagents, which means least transport cost, which means less CO2 emission for this transport, okay? Then we minimize uh, the fresh water consumption. We recycle all the, and all that, we did that not as a press release, we did that because we believe in that. So, so we, we have really done uh, uh, this project from scratches uh, to minimize environmental impact. On the social side, uh, we have done a, a very, very important work in the community and we have a, a support that, that is uh, amazing. As a matter of fact, the pressure that we have is to open the project. Uh, and in that front, we have been working in uh, with the community, with the uh, local government and with the uh, community associations uh, in multiple fronts. And one of the things I have to show, like I give you something, the community has 10,000 people. Okay. 10,000 people have the community. Well, over a thousand visit the project. And you go like, one in 10? Yeah, one in 10. I mean, that is amazing. That is amazing, okay? And we took, we did it in, in different ways, you know, taking the people to the project, to the pilot plant. So a lot of people is aware and understand what we are doing and we are trying to do. Uh, so, so this is also very important. On top of that, of course, we have very strong programs in buying local. We are the number one contractor of the, of the community. Number one in a, employer we are the number one the spending money in the community so we have priorities in purchases on the on the local shops so so we have a and we have been doing you know what's important we have been doing that from from year one not now not now because it's fashion no 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 this is a program that has been in place from year one and that is what gained us a reputation uh for what we are doing excellent um, so in summary then for investors that are interested in Neolithium now, um, you know, what are the key milestones to look out for this year? You've got the PFS uh, coming out. You're potentially going to be in construction by the end of the year. Take, take us through the, yeah. the key points. Yeah. yeah, well, I say to investors, look, our company today is trading at 0 0.3, 0 0.35, you know, price uh, to net asset value. Okay. That this is what we are trading today. If you want to say $2, $3, 2.8, 2.9, whatever. So we are 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 2, 0 0.35 net asset value. We are, we have the largest battery manufacturer in the world as our shareholder. And we are in partnership with them to build this together in a process of discussion of the final conditions for uh, uh, building uh, the mine, that is for financing completely the mine. If you compare companies that are building their mine because they are already financed, Lithium Americas, Sigma, you know, other companies similar to us, they trade 0 0.8, 0 0.9 price to net asset value. And some of them, lucky them, they're trading even above net asset value. So, if you compare our price to net asset value to people who is finance, we are trading half. So this is what you have to earn investing in Neolithium. So now is the time to go on board. Now is the time 
that actually companies are made, you know, and, and big projects are built. Okay. So I would say to the investors, you know, look out, take a look at the valuation of all companies, take a look where we are at which stage that we are, and, uh, and you know, welcome aboard because uh, this is going to be uh, one of the most important lithium mines in the world, one of the biggest when we define the expansion. Well, we are going to be one of the three largest producers in the world, we will see. With the kind of resources that we have, uh, 20,000 tons is going to be just the first phase. So now is the time. Excellent. And do you expect to be in construction early next year? Yes, yes. Uh, our objective is to start construction of the ponds by December. Um, I should say that uh, definitively the COVID has an impact. Uh, mm. I strongly believe that Argentina is getting the vaccines that they are desperately needed. The same than Europe, Canada, you know, and other countries. Maybe we are a little bit behind, but not that much. So I strongly believe that by September, October, you know, they, we will be moving out of the pandemic. Having said that, so far for mining, the government gave us priority. So even though there is lockdowns, we can mobilize. So we haven't experienced severe delays. Where there are delays for us and all industries in the world, in the world, is delays caused by COVID. So a contractor or a builder of something, you know, right. go to buy some shoes and they say, oh, we have a delay on those shoes because they are actually whatever, you know, from Italy and actually they have a COVID. So there is in the industry in general some delays. So that's why I always say this is our objective. We will we will be we will be close, uh, or we will be right on time. It, it depends a little bit on the on the way the COVID evolves in every district. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, wonder, well, they're really good to get an update on great progress there and some really uh, exciting uh, second half of the year going ahead. So I wish you best of luck with that and look forward to talking again before the year's up. Thank you very much and stay tuned because uh, there is news coming from your lithium uh, and this this next six months are going to be critical in creating a, a large, a very important lithium company. Absolutely. Thanks, Walter. Thank you. Thank you.